Okay, so, uh, hi, Sue Day. Hi, Sue Day. And yeah. I always uh, start these typing sessions by asking the same question, which is, how many typing session videos have you seen before? Enough to know the correct answers to the troll question. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> so, uh, then uh, I think I'd like to start by asking you to give me your definition of extroverted feeling. Empathy. Um, for me, um, okay, let me think. It is, I guess, a way to look at uh, what happens things and objects in a through the society's eye i guess okay so this is good this is bad this is ugly etc so if you walked into a house and you saw that they had that same painting that you have behind you mm -hmm. up, up on their wall how would you approach that? Would you would you mention it or not mention it? Would you use it to connect with them, or would you go like, "Hey, you stole that idea from me"? Um, actually, this uh, I don't have a strong personal connection to this painting since it was one of the few options for me who wanted to just have a um, medieval painting on. Her role. So, do you like? I guess do you I like clamshells, especially. Do you like? Do, like do you like clamshells? What is that? <laughs> it's the thing that the lady's standing on. Oh. It's a giant clamshell. Um, should I talk about why I chose this painting? Yes. Yeah. Um. First of all, I like medieval painting paintings because they have all um, they, their perspective is completely wrong, <laughs> and the, the persons depicted are very flawed. And I um, this reminds me of how much we can be wrong in our perception, and it just comes funny to me the medieval you know animal depictions, etc. and also, the person in the middle, you probably know, is Venus. And I like the fact that the Venus is not the Venus we see today. Like, it has nothing. It's not similar to today's uh, beauty standards. Also, I chose this painting because I attend to online classes every day. And I wanted to trigger conservative people. <laughs> I see. Um, so, why do you... You say that you think that Venus deviates from conventional modern beauty standards. So, in what way? In what way? It ha it, she has a belly, and she is not that thin, but also not very curvy. She doesn't have a pronounced uh, feminine figure. I see. Um, okay, so uh, do you like the paintings of that guy, what was his name, who draws like these city scenes, but or like a, city, a scene of hell with like a bunch of little different devils doing different things in different places, but sometimes he does cities with a bunch of different little guys doing different things and different things. You know what I'm talking about? I don't think, I don't think I know them. Hmm. He has weirdly shaped people that are like out of proportion to each other and stuff like that. It made me think of him. Uh, okay, regardless, uh, so would you say that you like to look at visual art as an activity in general? Yeah. And by, do you have a preference for a certain medium like painting over, say, sculpture or uh, still images photography? Hmm. I think I like painting the most because it gives the creator more 
expressive space. Okay. Do you like old paintings more than new paintings? Hmm. I think I have to discuss what modern art is to answer that. Okay. But I like both, I guess. I I I have um the things I like both from every era. I see. Um do you I think we always sorry. Go ahead. Can I proceed? Of course. I think we um think that the past is the past uh, the art from past eras is, is, are always better because the better stuff stucks around. I see. So But I don't think that's not the case. Yeah. So uh you're not buying the argument that if it's old, it's got to be cream, whereas it's new, most of it's milk. <laughs> I don't get what you mean. Well, they say the cream rises to the top. So if you milk a cow, hmm. right, when it mm -hmm. comes out of the when it comes out of the cow, it's a mixture mm -hmm. of cream and milk. If you let it mm -hmm. sit there for a while, the cream uh -huh. will rise to the top of it, and the milk will be down below. Now the cream's considered, or used to be considered, the best part of the milk. So yeah. um, pe the expression came: the cream always rises to the top. So what you're basically, the argument there that you're sort of denying, you're disagreeing with, is that if it's from the By past, time, it? if it's from yeah. the past, it must be just cream. Whereas if it's in the mm -hmm. current moment, it's mostly milk out there. Yeah. Okay. And you don't agree with that argument? I agree with that. Oh, you do agree with it. In the sense that what we remember is always better. Or we can, I don't know, maybe some stuff stuck around because it's so bad that it's good hmm. um like who let the dogs out mm -hmm. um can i ask you to demonstrate uh the si demo for uh i don't know the last couple hours so do you need me to demonstrate it first or do you know what i'm talking about i guess i i should start with the starting of the day and Sure. Shortly talk about my day. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to wake up around ten and a half in the morning, but I couldn't wake up because um, sleep is a problem for me. And my classes start starts today at eleven, but I woke up around ten and fifty, and I attended to the class laying down on the bed with my cam turned off and it was a class with duration of one hour then I after that I had breakfast and I attended to the last classes after that I um, during the um, break I watched a few of talking with payments people videos but not the typing ones mm. just to you know Think right. about what I can talk about. Okay. Is this enough? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, do you <laughs> cook? Uh, do you cook your own food? No, because I'm living with my family right now. Okay. And does your mom cook the food? Usually, yeah. Sometimes okay. we order stuff. All right. Does she try to teach you how to cook the food? No. I see. So she doesn't want anybody's help in cooking the food. She asks me when she wants help. But generally, no. Are you interested in learning how to cook the food? Only when I need it. Okay. Um, how about your uh, sleep habits? Do you go to bed at the same time every night or different times, depending? I go to bed at the same time, but I sleep hours later, probably. Okay. How many hours of sleep do you think you need a night? For me to feel um, not sleep deprived, I guess around eight. Okay. Let's say you don't get enough sleep and you wake up. Describe to me the physical feeling of not having had enough sleep. Hmm. I feel disconnected from my body. And also, I it's so hard for me to move. Um, also... 
I feel like I'm not awake, but also not sleeping at the same time. Okay. Um, do you do you say to yourself, "God, I need to go back to bed, or I need more sleep"? Of course. <laughs> okay. Um. So, uh, let me ask you, uh, what what are you studying? I'm studying linguistics right now. That's a good subject to study. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you get, TI stuff. You get two thumbs up for studying <laughs> linguistics from me. Um, all right, cool. So, what's your understanding of how grammar links to consciousness? I have grammar links to consciousness. We. I mean, I'm, I just started learning linguistics. This is too advanced for me. <laughs> this isn't even a but linguistics question, like really. It's not really a linguistics question. It's more of a philosophy in general question. Yeah. For me, my experience with learning new languages is just learning the... Um, both rules and the exceptions, the correct exceptions because all languages has exceptions. I mean, I learned English by myself. You know, my first language is Turkish. Mm -hmm. And it was a process of watching random people until I started to understand them um, correctly. It was my own obsession with, like I, I, I told to myself, I have to understand this. Why am I not understanding this? So, so is Turkish just mostly all gobbles? What? <laughs> <laughs> but like it's harsh, harsh gobbles, I would say. That, that's a, we have that's very strong consonants. That's if a classic talk, dad joke. <laughs> if I talk with Turkish accent, it sounds like this. I'm making all the consonants like it's in Turkish right now. I see. Okay, so there's there's a lot of uh, of like stoppages and stuff in the language huh yeah all right cool um so uh how do you feel emotionally right now i'm feeling anxious, anxious. because i'm thinking, because talking very slowly nice. oh no internet connection lost we're, we're good you came back you're feeling anxious because I'm a terribly frightening person? No. Oh, that's not why. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I really am not. <laughs> okay, so uh, how do you feel physically right now? Do you have any sore, sore, sore shoulder or stiff neck or anything like that? No, oh, I'm pretty comfortable right now. Okay. Before you got onto this session, what prep did you do for your space right there that you're sitting in? Did you decide where you were going to sit, what was going to be in the background, or did you just go somewhere in a random place? This was just the setting for my online classes. Okay. And did you decide I went along with it. Did you decide what you were going to wear before you joined this session or did I you did just, my makeup. You did your makeup. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, do you do you like girly stuff like that, like makeup and perfume and jewelry and stuff? Yeah. Now to the topic of uh, which kind of action you tend to take. So, uh, to do that, I'm going to try to distinguish between extroverted intuition and extroverted sensing. Mm -hmm. What's your relationship with procrastination? Yes. <laughs> okay. <It's>, yes. <laughs> And when you are procrastinating, are you fretting about the thing you're procrastinating about? Are you mm -hmm. uh, saying, nanny, 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 I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to distract myself with this. Or are you mm -hmm. uh, trying to study more about the thing you're procrastinating about so you feel informed enough to begin it? I'm pro procrastinating stuff. With more, like if I'm, I have to do a homework. 
I'm starting another homework, which I, I'm more interested about. Then I know that I'm. So you find it? Am I still connected? Hello. Yeah, you're, you're kind of choppy, but I, the gist of what I'm getting from you is that you find it easier to work on things where there's that you don't need to work on when you need to work on something really badly. You work on something else that you don't need to work on so badly, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's say somebody else asks you for help on an essay they have to write about um, why uh, Istanbul is no longer Constantinople. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Because you said so. <laughs> oh, that's nobody, it's nobody's business but the Turks. I'm kidding. You, you know the song. I'm kidding, right? I don't care. I would like to call it Constantinople more than Istanbul. <laughs> Are you familiar with I that song? I would like song? to give Aya Sofia back. Are, are you familiar yeah. with the song Istanbul, not Constantinople? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say you're, they want to you to write, help them write an essay. Um, how willing are you to help? How much of a burden do you think it is to, for them to ask you? Um, and let's say you do help them. Are you going to expect something equivalent in return? And what might that be? It would be more about i would i would take into contra consideration con consideration <laughs> consideration yes um more the frequency of their you know how many times did they want me to help them with essays if it's very rare i will be willing to help them without wanting anything back i see what if they want you to help them frequently but Every time you do help them, they buy, bring a fancy dinner and sit with you while you're helping them. And they, and they let me get you another drink and, and here, I'll, uh, let me, uh, let me, oh, you want the, that shirt? Let me order it for you while you're working and I'll have it sent to your house. So they're, but, but they're graduating without knowing anything, maybe. I don't know, maybe. They, I'm just really helping them and they are actually learning. If I'm feeling they are learning too, I would proceed with helping them. Okay. So, in other words, their ooing and aahing over what a good job you're doing is not sufficient motivation for you to want to do a good job. Okay. I'm idealistic like that. Okay. Uh, what is your definition of truth? It is what is left behind when you adapt other people's truths. Okay. Like some stuff contradicts itself and you, something is left behind. Okay. So which of the following old sayings is truer? Uh, a stitch in time saves nine. Or silence is golden. Now, in case you're not familiar with these old sayings, a stitch in time saves nine means that if your clothes get a little rip in it and you sew it back up right away, then the rip won't get any bigger. But if you don't, then it'll get bigger. So get on a problem right away before it gets bigger is the meaning of the, second, the first one. The second one, silence is golden. Uh, prioritizes the benefits of not speaking or not responding or mm -hmm. refusing to provide information, I guess. First one, I'd say. Okay. And uh, how about the first one, the stitch in time of nine, or if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. First one again. Okay. How about the first one or if it ain't broke, don't fix it. First one again. <laughs> okay. How about the first There is no end to fixing. We can fix everything. How about the uh, 
first one or um, you got to make time to stop and smell the roses. Hmm. Okay, this is second one. Okay, what about um, you? You, you got to make time to smell the roses versus our true selves or our feelings. What do you mean by feelings, I would ask? <laughs> okay, well, let me shift lines of questioning. <laughs> This is the worst question to ask an ENTP. Let me let me shift the line of questioning. What uh, when when you feel sad, do you necessarily feel sad about something? I am I am leaving this room and going to the internet connection thing. Okay. So, can you ask the question again? Sure. When you feel sad, do you feel sad about something or just in general, you can feel sad about nothing? I feel sad about something. I'm sure. How about happy? If I don't, if I feel sad and if I feel something and can't find anything to feel that about, it evaporates. <laughs> okay. If somebody else is mad at you because you hurt their feelings, um, does it matter whether or not they were justified in having their feelings hurt by what you said? Inside of my mind, it does, but I learned by time to accept other people's reasonings are different from mine. <laughs> okay. Let's say somebody comes up to you and they say, I'm really mad at you. Mm -hmm. you. You told me my shirt was ugly. You didn't like it. And you're like, well, you asked me what I thought about your shirt. I didn't say it was ugly. I just said it's it's interesting. It's not really my taste. And they're like, I know what In you meant. Test, you I meant told it. someone I hated their shirt, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're really mad at you. But after all, they asked you. They and you gave them your honest opinion. So how do, do you... How do you respond to that? Do you feel like, okay, I, I guess I was too harsh. I should have pulled my punches more. Or do you think, uh, no, you asked me, you should expect to hear the truth. I told them if they were wearing such a flashy shirt with many colors and pattern, they would accept some people not liking it. And well, I'm one of those, pe those people. I see. What do you think about my shirt? What's the meaning behind it? It was the name of the live stream too, but I didn't get it. <laughs> it's from a show called Blue Exorcist. It's a Japanese show where the main character wears this shirt in the show. Mm -hmm. So then it's it's okay. It's nice. <laughs> do you think? Uh, do you think it would have been better in a different color, or do you think blue is a good color? I think blue is a good color for you. Okay, thanks. Because you seem to have cool undertones. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'm not sure. I'm seeing you from the it's, screen. It's the beard. I've got a lot of blue in my beard. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, do you have a, a favorite meal? Mm. Dinner, probably. No, I mean dish. <sighs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's the language barrier. Um... <laughs> Oh, no, you're, you're correct, actually. You used the words <laughs> correctly. I, I used meal to mean dish when I should have said dish. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's my main dish? We have a traditional dish from where I am from. And actually, too, they are probably my favorites. Okay. They're both spicy food. Okay, as far as sweets go, what kind of sweets do you like? Are you chocolate or are you uh, fruit flavored or vanilla flavored or something else? 
I hate bitter chocolate, like dark chocolate. And that's it, I guess the rest is in the same <laughs> okay. level. Um, I'm going to present you with a scenario. You're in a locked room, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and the door knob on this side, the side that you're on, has no doorknob. It's just flat all all down the door. Um, and this the slit around the door is very thin, so you can't put your finger underneath it. Mm -hmm. Now, inside this room, there's a window that is high up that you can't see out of. There's a dresser with drawers in it. And uh, the only thing you're wearing is your pajamas. And uh, you don't have any jewelry or stuff on either. You got no objects with you, just in, so your, in your clothes. No pick, right? Okay. Um, and what do you, what do you want to do? Can I move the dresser? Yeah. I'd move the dresser under the window to see outside. Okay. You look outside and you realize that you're in a high tower. You can see a beach down below. But if you were to get out the window and you jump, you'd die because it's too far, too high up. And it's like, you can climb down because it's like a, a round tower with fairly okay. flat bricks. Can I um, <laughs> get undressed, basically? I want to um, use my clothes and tie them together too. And no. Too high up. That you'll okay. still die. <laughs> that, that just gets you like maybe six more feet, and you're like, you yeah. know, a hundred feet up. Maybe I can use my shirt as a flag or something to get attention from outside. Are there people on the beach? Well, you don't see anybody there now, but that's possible that there could be a boat go by or people come by, and you could, in fact get their attention and you, maybe you could even just shout at them and they might be able to hear you but at the moment you don't see anybody there hmm. can I check out the um, do whatever you want dresser sections okay so you open, you open each of the drawers there's a book in one of them um, which about is, what it's titled Birds of Madagascar <laughs> okay <laughs> and then in the other drawer, there's uh, a handwritten journal with uh, with a couple of teeny stubs of pencils and then one full pencil. And mm -hmm. when you when you read it, it's fairly short. It's the tragic story of someone who was stuck in this room until they died. That's unfortunate. <laughs> well, what what did they? Did they try anything? Right. So it, when you read it through it, they indicate that they uh, they tried to uh, shout at people that they occasionally see on the beach, but the people would just look at them and then go about their business and not be responsive at all. And that uh, they saw a boat one time and they tried to shout mm -hmm. at it, but nobody on the boat could hear them. Apparently, they didn't think to use their shirt or the flag or anything. So... They uh, were unable to get any kind of contact with the boat. They also indicated that they they kept trying to to put their fingers under the slits of the door because they're they were pretty convinced that if they could pull on it, it would open. But they mm -hmm. couldn't they could never fit their fingers. And uh, even at the very end, when he was emaciated and his fingers were very skinny, he still couldn't fit under the slit under the door. I have tiny hands, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would try using the flag thing, it's short or something. Okay, well, you spend, mm -hmm. you spend a day and a half waiting at the window. You see one cruise ship way off in the distance, but yeah. you're too far no. to see your flag. Hmm. You're getting pretty hungry. And, Are you sure and that thirsty. If, I could open the door. If you could pull on it, that's what the guy suggests in his in his mm. journal. But there's no doorknob on the inside of it. And I could try with the pen. Okay, the pencil still 
it's too thick. It won't fit under the the slit. The slit's like like this. Does the pencil have the <laughs> paper, the stuff to hang on the paper? <laughs> no, they're just regular number two pencils. Your regular yellow. Can I number. open it? <laughs> no, they're not mechanical. They're regular number two pencils. I would start to pray, God, to, <laughs> <laughs> to forgive me for the years I've been an atheist. Okay, well, you know what? <laughs> you pray, and after you fall asleep, you have a dream. And you dream of yourself uh, flossing with the cover of the three ring binder in which the notebook was written. Flossing? Why am I flossing? <laughs> I could just try op try opening the door. <laughs> the point is, <laughs> the point is, you could slide the cover of the notebook underneath mm -hmm. that crack. Okay. That was what the dream was supposed to instruct you of. Okay, let yeah. me let me shift my line of questioning here. Uh, if uh, can you tell me how many uses you can think of for a a a straw hat? Um, we can obviously use it as a hat. We can use it to, you know pour um, dirty water on top and maybe it's a filter mm. <laughs> and then Good idea. maybe we can burn it to burn something down a log or something um, maybe we can carry stuff in it um, it would be a great bird's nest <laughs> mm. um, what else Scarecrow hat. <laughs> it's the same function as a hat. Um, we can use it to attract cats to do this thing on it. That's true. They do like to do that thing <laughs> on it. Okay, that's a lot really? of that's a lot of reasons. That's, I mean, a lot of uses. That's good. Um, let me. What was I thinking about asking you when you were answering that? Uh, oh, right. So. Uh, I want you and I to make up a movie together on the fly. Okay. I'm going to give a couple concepts about a main character. I want you to sort of add on to it, maybe add a situation or something, and we'll go back and forth like that. Okay. Okay. So our main character is named Judy. <clears throat> Judy was a housewife in Britain until her husband had an affair and she had a, a sudden break with her former self and decided to change everything in her life. And so, uh, after three months of intensive martial arts training, she, uh, took a short flight from London to Oslo. Her name's what training uh, did you Mar martial arts training? And her name is Judy. Mm -hmm. Judy. She is an ISTP. <laughs> <laughs> well, prior to her hu catching her husband having an affair, she was mm -hmm. just a regular English housewife. She baked and cleaned and uh, raised the kids and stuff. And but some sort of, you know, something broke once she found that out, and and she decided to change her life. So, mm -hmm. so tell me more. She gets to Oslo. You tell me more about her. What happens? Why she's in Oslo? Are, do we want a realist, realistic novel? No, we're telling. We're telling. This is a. It could be whatever it is. It, there's no. Okay. There's no expectations for it. I have two things in mind. One is that she could be a antihero who beats uh, the husbands who has who ha who has who have who has an affair with their someone mm -hmm. to get revenge and the other one is that she could be a martial arts instructor okay well what i'm looking more for is the next stage in the story so you kind of added a mm -hmm. detail there that's good that before she leaves england she beats her husband to death 
and oh, no. I mean, that's right before she gets on the plane. She and so uh, by the time the English authorities are on it, she's in Oslo. Now the reason she's gone to Oslo is because mm-hmm. she's secretly contracted with a Chechnyan uh, resistance group, um, and they believe that her apparently normal and uh, un unsuspicious British identity and passport will allow her to gain close access to targets in Moscow. Uh, She's meeting with operatives in Oslo from Chechnya at a bar called the Oslo's uh, Oslo's finest bar is is the name of the bar. Mm -hmm. What happens at the meeting? Um... (laughs) <laughs> with whom was the meeting again? The, Judy is meeting <laughs> with Chechnyan resistance fighters mm-hmm. because she sympathizes with their cause, presumably. And mm-hmm. they believe with her lack of any sort of history or being on the radar of any of the international intelligence agencies, okay. that she's going to be able to gain close access to important targets in Moscow that normal Chechnyans wouldn't be able to because the Russian authorities are on the lookout for Chechnyans. Okay. She goes there, unsuspicious of anything, but turns out the people there, all there are uh, um, staged to test her fightings. So at one point it becomes a huge bar fight. That's but a big action she, scene, huh? <laughs> she could be... Um, she beats everyone easily, and they are shocked. <laughs> I forget. I forget. I like the way, this how that would play out. Also, maybe is you know, they come in. Uh, she's sitting at the bar. She, they come into the group. She's like sixty years mm-hmm. old, you know, white hair, and uh, she's she's drinking a pint. And hello, boys. And uh, the Chechens talking Chechen to each other, and uh, she they don't know she speaks Chechen, right? Uh, and they're talking about how uh, this old lady couldn't possibly do the job, blah, 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 blah. One of them goes and positions himself next to her by putting his arm on the bar and says, what's a nice old lady like you doing here in, in Oslo anyway? And she knocks his arm out and his face falls on the bar and then she goes, bam, bam, bam. Anybody else want a piece of me? <laughs> like that. <laughs> We could, I, I think we are a good team. Yeah, we could make a movie. <laughs> uh, it would be like kind of like um, Murder She Wrote, crossed with uh, crossed with John Quentin Wick. Quentin Tarantino. Crossed yeah. with John Wick, right? Murder She Wrote plus John Wick. It's Angela Lansbury does John Wick. Uh, anyway, okay. So, um, if you were asked to do play one of two roles in a poetry contest in which each person has to write five poems in 20 minutes. You can either be Mm -hmm. the judge of the poetry contest or a participant in the poetry contest. Number one, which would you rather do? Number two, which do you think you'd do a better job at? I'm interested in writing poetry myself, but in 20 minutes, it's a hard task. I will take it very seriously because I value writing good poetry. And I wouldn't be able to have fun writing it. Okay. Do you, um, do you think, I would be. I would prefer to be the judge. I think. Do you think you'd be correct in your judgment? Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you mean by correct? I would try to be objective and um, seek creativity. Creativity, I think. Well, but there is no correct answer. Answer to. That kind of stuff. Well, I mean, it's true that aesthetic judgments aren't reducibly or deductively so. In other words, you can't prove that your conclusion is correct. It's also the case that if we if we treat aesthetics objectively, we recognize that there is, in fact, a spectrum of quality that everybody who makes anything artistically mm-hmm. makes artistic decisions on the assumption that there are good and bad artistic decisions to be made and that we can recognize, for example, uh, a very beginning saxophone player trying to play 
some song very poorly, we'll recognize as not nearly as good in quality as somebody who played the same song well. So there's lots of areas in which we can genuinely find agreement about aesthetics. And the fact is, in my opinion, what's good and bad aesthetically is just as objectively true as who's taller. It's just not possible to prove it. But uh, regardless, um, okay, so do you... There are, there are a group of good, but there, there isn't a best, I think. Right, well, um, let me ask you some TI questions. Uh, if only people from Turkey speak Turkish and I speak Turkish, am I necessarily yeah. from Turkey? Yes. Okay. If no pineapples taste like cheese and I don't taste like cheese, am I a pineapple? No, not necessarily. If all squirrels drink coffee mm -hmm. and some coffee drinkers enjoy pastries, is mm -hmm. it necessarily the case that some squirrels enjoy pastries? No. If only squirrels drink coffee and some coffee drinkers enjoy pastries, is it necessarily yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right fine um were they correct of course yeah, yeah. Uh, uh i'm planning to be a logic professor so so that's important <laughs> okay then fine uh if p or q then i haven't taken any <laughs> if... pictures on that though it, it's fine. <laughs> if P or Q, okay. then R. And if not R, then S. Okay? Now, you also have S. Can we conclude anything? No. <laughs> okay. How about this? If not R, mm -hmm. then P. And mm -hmm. if P, then Q. And not Q. Can we conclude anything? It's not R, I think. Not not R. But it's R. We can conclude R. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, have you ever heard the hats question? I don't think so. All right. There's a hat, a bag with five hats in it. There mm -hmm. are three red hats and two white hats in the bag. Okay. Now, the warden of a prison has this bag of hats and he calls out three prisoners and he says, I'm going to do a little contest here. Um, I'm going to blindfold you all, first of all. And he blindfolds all three prisoners. And he says, now, each of you take a hat from the bag and put it on your head at random. So they reach in, can't see which hat they're grabbing. They put it on top of their head. It's a little teeny hat, so they can't see their own hat on top of their head, okay? Now, they each have a hat on top of their head that they pulled randomly from the bag. The warden then takes the blindfold off of the first prisoner, and he says to the first prisoner, if you can tell me what color hat you have on, I will let you go free. If mm -hmm. you tr tell me and you're wrong, I will kill you instantly, or you can refuse to answer and go back to your cell. So the guy who has his blindfold taken off, Abe, the first guy, he looks at the other two prisoners' hats and he says to the warden, I can't tell you what color hat my hat is. So the, the warden says, okay, stay here. And he takes the blindfold off the second guy, Barry. And Barry looks at the other two prisoners and he says, I cannot tell you what color hat my hat is. And then the, the warden goes to take off Carl, the third guy's blindfold. And Carl says, you don't need to take off my blindfold. I can tell you what color hat my hat is. And he says what it is. And and the warden says, you're correct, and lets him go. So what color was his hat, and how did he know? What was the info you gave me in the beginning? There are three, the hats. three red hats and two white hats in a bag. Two reds, two whites. Um, the first two was white, I guess. Because then the last one has to be red. 
Why? Because there is two lights. There's there there are five hats in the bag, but there are only three hats pulled out. So it's possible yeah. that all that all three guys pulled out red. It's possible that two whites and a red were pulled out. It's possible that one right, one white, and two reds were pulled out. I'm thinking. When if I were okay for the first one, if it was one red and a one white, you wouldn't be able to tell. For the second one, okay, red, red and white, you wouldn't be able to tell. It works for the first two ones to be white, but I can't think of any. I I know I can't think. You have to think about it in terms of. You have to think about it in terms of the first guy, under what conditions would he have been able to tell? If he saw two white. Right. But he didn't. But he did. <laughs> he probably saw. But he didn't see two white. Yeah. Now, the second guy, he also has the same conditions. He would know his own hat yeah. is red if he saw two white. But he also has the information from the first guy's experience. Yes. So he he introduced what the first guy didn't see. And that makes it more likely for the second guy to be able to figure out what color hat he is. It's, 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 listen, I didn't, I didn't get that. When I first heard this problem, I did not get it. And I did not get it right. And, or I didn't, I think I ended up having to look up the answer or be told the answer, or maybe Delilah and I mm -hmm. figured it out after a long time. But, uh, I think that's what happened. But the answer is this. It's like the first guy, hi dad. What well, we got there. Take what you want. Uh, okay. Uh, is it bacon? No, it's a dry tip. Okay. It's just, it's just out of the oven. All right. Well, um, I'm, I'm in the middle of a typing session right now, but I will, uh, if you want to take it back inside, I'll come in as soon as I'm done. Or if you want to leave it out here, I'll bring it back in when I'm done. Just leave it. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. Um, if that's important, I can wait. Uh, n no. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you in a little bit. It's, uh, my dad just made a, uh, a roast and he wants to share it with me and Rachel. Rachel's still in bed and it's 1050 in the morning and why I'm getting part of a pot roast at 1050 in the morning is anyone's <laughs> guess, but <laughs> regardless. Um, okay. So what's the answer? <laughs> so the answer is this. The first guy knows if he saw two white hats, then his own hat would be red. He didn't see yes. two white hats, which means the second guy knows if the third guy's hat is white, then the second guy's hat must be red because the first guy didn't see two white hats. So mm -hmm. since the second guy doesn't see, doesn't know what color hat his hat is, then the third guy's hat must not be white because the first guy, if he'd seen two white hats, he would have known his own hat color. The second guy, if he had seen one white hat, um, he would have known his own hat color because he knows the conditions under which the first guy would have known his hat color. So then at that point, the third guy knows that the second guy looked at the third guy's hat and didn't see white because if the second guy had seen white on the third guy's hat, then the second guy would have known his own hat was red. Because if both the second and the third guy's hats were white, then the first guy would have known his own hat was red. Get it? Yeah. Okay. Um, so your TI is obviously really good. Uh, and you mentioned wanting to be a logic professor. Uh, That's one of the options. I'm interested in it too. You'll probably find it very easy to master the basics of conditional logic uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the proofs and stuff. 
quantification theory is after that, and it's also not particularly challenging. It's once you get after quantification theory into, like, I guess, uh, set theory, then it gets a little bit more complicated. But I, that's where I mm -hmm. kind of stopped. I used to teach logic in high school, mm -hmm. uh, but I never. I looked at your LinkedIn profile. Oh. <laughs> Did you? Do I have a LinkedIn profile? I guess I must. Um, it says you are a family guy. I'm a family guy? Do you remember it? I don't remember what it says. <laughs> it must have been back when I was looking for regular work or something. I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not really looking for work anymore. Um so okay. You're an interesting case. Uh you Thank you. That means I'm not wasting your time. <laughs> you uh, I was well, you let you let right. it slip it's earlier. Confused. You let it slip earlier. I think that you self-identify probably as an ENTP. Is that correct? For the longest time, to until 2018, I thought I was an ENTP. Then I found your find out find found out <laughs> about your channel, and then I joined the chat room. One of the chat rooms around 2000 early. 2019 and people there tried to type me and they I remember they asked me about God <laughs> what do you think about God is, is he real I it's, talked about the question I don't I don't remember what I said and they told really me that I'm a textbook the INFJ that's not that's and, not relevant to time okay. <laughs> and I was like I guess I'm an INFJ um, it makes sense that I'm an INFJ. Yeah, yeah, it does. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, that's. But that doesn't explain why my date and four best friends are all ENTJs. Uh, let's test your TE. Uh, can you break smoking a cigarette into exactly six steps? Six. Six is too much. Um. Open the cigarette box, take one out, flip it to the correct side, take your lighter, light cigarette, and smoke it. Okay. <laughs> um, can you plan for me uh, robbing antiquities from an archaeological dig? It's not very hard. Once I wanted to take a little piece of a pot, I asked the person there, and they told me it was okay. I could bring it home with me. <laughs> okay, well, I'm talking um, about like uh, yeah, an archaeological I dig, answer. like in Egypt, where they got okay. where they got like security and stuff. Mm hmm. Mm. We we would need. Well, more than one person, I guess. <laughs> I put together a team for me. What skill sets are you looking um, for in your team members? Um, I would prefer someone who already works there. Okay, you want an insider. Okay. Yeah. And then, I would, is there any tech stuff or is it, um, you know? They've got security cameras. Field. they got closed closed circuit security cameras and is it? the security guard sitting in a in a video screen room where he's watching the various cameras and what's going on do we really need a tech per tech person to deal with it or we can you know how we... willing are you to use violence you could just you could just take that take that guard out but but then they would come after us well I don't want to um, try to escape from police for the rest of my life I want to what <laughs> about some time. what about you put some um, like some alcohol but also some sleeping pills in his in his beverage so that like, everyone I, thinks I he's gotten drunk to... on the job mm -hmm. that's a good idea <laughs> <laughs> it would work probably. So, but I wanted to um, 
get them distracted with something. That's why I wanted an insider. Okay. What's your distraction? Um, How are you going to have them maybe, cause a distraction? Maybe, maybe I can pretend to be a tourist and create a big fight. Oh, I see. Far from <laughs> things we will so you'll act do. like an entitled tourist. Yeah. Well, my map says that the shopping mall is right <laughs> over here. And, and uh, I don't know who you are, but I pretend not to speak their language. Just I would shout Turks and they would get scared. Yell at them in English. That'd be more believable. Oh, an entitled, an entitled English speaker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, um, this will be irrelevant, but I, I plan to do my master's degree in Europe. And, you know, some countries are very racist. And they shout at you in their language, German, French, um, when they realize you are Turkish. And with me, with my friends, uh, decided to shout Allahu Akbar at them <laughs> <laughs> to make them scared. What happened to the days when Turkey was the, was the European part of the Middle East? Actually, I said the Allahu Akbar with an um, Arabic accent. We don't say it like that <laughs> but that's what europeans think when we say turkish but you know, maybe i can use that a lot same alawik but at the that used to be at least museum. in america the perception of turkey was that it was the 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 european middle eastern country that was sort of the that they were middle eastern but mm -hmm. they were like europeans it used to be the perception, but I guess it's not. The anymore. Turkish people is very open to, you know, it, we go wherever they they go wherever the leader wants them to go, and for a short while it was like that because the government was trying to get into into the EU. Europe. But now we have a much more conservative thing what, going on. Was the on. EU it's, incredibly dickish yeah. about the whole thing? <laughs> What? So was the EU particularly dickish about the whole thing? Like they what thing? I mean, like they have the EU has these various rules that you have to meet certain benchmarks before you can be admitted to the EU. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me, if I remember correctly, that they were particularly dickish with Turkey. That they were like, like, like they were you not to, very you have realistic to meet these, and logical. Yeah, you have to meet these benchmarks plus some extra shit that we're tossing on there too, just to make it more difficult. And they, they were like, "Good luck." <laughs> right, <laughs> um, wasted opportunity, I think, really. Uh, but yeah, I think so. Uh, okay, so um, your TI is obviously very strong. Could easily enough be first or second slot. Your your TI really? your TI results suggest that that your conclusion that you're an HP is not without merit. Now I will say something that's really not very relevant, but that you don't you look beta quadra. Um, I don't type people by how they look, but you you look like you're beta quadra. Who are the beta? Beta quadras are INFJs, ESTPs, and ISTPs, ENFJs. I'd like to throw out the possibility mm. that you might be an ESCP. Um, mm. Your extroverted intuition doesn't seem dominant to me. Uh, I think INFJ is not a bad typing of you because you obviously seem incredibly intuitive. Your TE seems better than polar, though. So uh, Right, right. I think so. Yeah, so I would suggest possibly you're an ESTP. I don't think it's a crisis. <laughs> but I'm I'm not really sure, and in part because so many I can my, flex my muscles. <laughs> so many of my tests uh, are are most effective with native English speakers, and yeah. le are diminishing effectiveness with non-native English speakers. So it's like for me to test your extroverted intuition when we're talking about the the story, right? Um, you may have noticed how. You you provided sort of broad ni things, and it was not about English. I can conclude conclude that I feel much more um, comfortable with the general vibes for a story. Right, I'm bad at details. Yeah, so that's much more of an ni ni dom mm -hmm. kind of intuition than an any dom kind of intuition. Where 
I could extend that. In my head, I was sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, I was saying in my head that I was doing the NI general vibes thing and you were doing the SI, even though it's it's not real SI in the world, but you were using right. that. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, and the thing is your intuitive grasp of of those processes in the moment, both in yourself and mm -hmm. in me, is also suggestive of a receiving type who's observing, you know. So that would mm -hmm. be suggestive of INFJ. Now, whether you're an INFJ or an ESTP, the thing is, your TI is awfully strong and could qualify that as... That may be because my dad is an ISTP. Okay. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say it could qualify as one or two, but I will also say that uh, the TI of third slot is... There's a wide range of displays of it. So mm -hmm. I, I've met INFJs and ISFJs have got fantastic TI, and I've got I I've met ISFJs and INFJs like both my last and current girlfriend, whose TI is not not nearly so robust. Um, no offense to either of them, uh, it's not really relevant to anything in my opinion. But uh, uh -huh. um, you know, when you test the skills, uh, some people are accustomed to being tested in those kind of things and being a subject, displaying their capacity mm -hmm. to be logical. And others have relied on other tools. So if, if you FE do have, problem. if you have FE tool, and you're not in an environment that asks you to behave as a subject successfully using logic, in other words, if you get further with FE than you do with TI, if which, your parents use FY, <laughs> yeah, right. With an ISTP, you're never going to get further with FE than you are with TI. So you've had to learn to be pretty logical. Uh, so. Uh, I think um, the most likely type for you is INFJ with strong TI. Can I ask a few questions for advice? Please. Um, I started a YouTube channel in Turkish about MBTI, but then I stopped because I was very bad at explaining stuff, both because I was um, trying to translate it from English to Turkish constantly in my mind but also because I think I'm generally bad at explaining things that I understand very well. The more I understand it, the worse it gets, but I'm planning to be a professor and this is a problem. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you're gonna have any problem being a professor of logic because- uh, It doesn't there, require any SI. <laughs> right, there's a straightforward progression of, of curricular things too. I, uh, I'm su I'm not I'm not surprised that the TWFP community typed you as INFJ, but I uh, I am surprised that uh, they could tell from not actually talking to you just from text because I find I can't type people just from reading their chats. No, I, we were talking with Camzone and oh you like did this. oh you did talk yeah. to him okay all right Becky was there. Uh, who was there? Becky Becky. She was Becky, right? The, the ENTP with blue hair. Uh huh. Becky yeah. typed you as the ENTP? Or as INFJ? INFJ. Yeah, she was right. That must have been a long, <laughs> that must have been a long time ago. It was. <laughs> well, good for Becky. Uh, I don't know what if you're fami do? familiar with any of the okay. drama that occurred with Becky after that. <laughs> a lot of drama. I suspected there was some drama because she vanished from your channel and I couldn't catch up. Right, yeah, she yeah. Uh, <laughs> some drama there. Um, okay, cool. So sorry for your loss. Um, <laughs> uh, that's fine. <laughs> uh, and then are you cool with me publishing this? Yes. All right, cool, great. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, I'll publish it in a little bit, like later this afternoon. I thank you very much. Okay, uh, bye bye. This is a very crucial point in my life. All right, cool. Bye.